In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take your entire YouTube setup, your lights, your mic, your camera, and put it onto one single stand. You gotta just press record. Hey guys, my name is Noel Molt with Think Media. Now, I'm really, really stoked for this video today because a lot of people have been wondering about this one stand setup, and I really think it's super cool. It's changed the way that I do YouTube videos. It's been so helpful, so efficient, and so I'm really excited to share this with you guys, and I've really been experimenting with this setup for like the past month, trying out different parts, and I feel like I found the perfect budget-friendly option for people out there who want to take their YouTube setup and condense it into one stand, especially if you have a small office space. Now I work in an 85 square foot office. So really it's not ideal for me to have these big soft boxes, to have a boom pole, to have a tripod. Now I really was doing that. A lot of the videos that I shot on this channel, I had this entire setup. I had all those stands and it just took up so much space and always took a long time to set up and to tear down because you can't leave that up in a small office space. So what I've done is I've taken everything, I've put it onto one stand and now everything is just so smooth. I can leave it up because it's so small that it's just up all the time and I can shoot videos so fast. Now I actually got my inspiration from Caleb Pike at DSLR Video Shooter, but I wanted to find a way to do it cheaper. Now his setup comes in at $1,234. That's excluding the camera and the lens. And so I started to do some shopping. I started to do some experimenting and I finally found the perfect one stand and I call her I don't really have a name for it yet, but maybe if you have a great name for this one stand setup, put it in the comments down below because I don't know, this thing's a beast. I feel like it needs a name. Okay, bring the music back. So after the blood, sweat, and tears, this nameless one stand came out to be $494. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Nolan, that's $494, that's not cheap. That's still a lot of money. Well, you're right, but I want you to take this into perspective. Now, this light that I'm actually using right now, it's super compact, and if you were to just get this light, and a light stand, that's gonna cost you $226 alone. A tripod to hold your camera, that's another $65, and then a C-stand to boom your microphone, and that's another $110. And then you add all the needed accessories, like your microphone, your extension cable, the sandbags for your stands, the phone holder. You add that all up, and that's gonna leave you at $455. But for only 40 more dollars, you can purchase and create the nameless one stand and save so much room for activities. It'll give us so much extra space in our room to do activities. <laughs> Before we get to the rest of this video, we wanted to shout out our sponsor of this video, StreamYard. This is our go-to platform for live streaming to YouTube and to Facebook, especially when we have multiple people joining on the stream. They have a super easy to use interface for doing cool transitions, bringing text on the screen, and seamlessly bringing on guests to the show. This is the perfect platform for new and experienced creators alike, and you can use the link we have in the description description below to get $10 off your first month. All right, back to the video. A really cool thing about this setup is you can still just pick it up and move it anywhere. Now my wife and I just shot a video on her channel and I picked this thing up, I put it into our bedroom, I turned it on and we had fantastic lighting. We had great audio. We had a really cool image with the Sony a7S III, but of course you can use whatever camera you have, but the fact that you can just pick this thing up, put it anywhere and your lights, your microphone, your camera, it's all set up for you. You, it's really a game changer. All right, so let's talk about what pieces are involved in creating the one stand. First of all, at the base of this, you have a lighting stand. And I've actually been testing out a few. And right now I'm actually using a light stand from GVM. It's a very cheap light stand that just came with one of their lights. Now I don't recommend this. I actually recommend buying a more heavy duty light stand. But the one that I bought from newer actually broke on me. One of the tightening knobs was de-threaded within the first like couple weeks. And so I'm not gonna recommend that to you guys, but I do have a link in the description to the one that I do recommend that is much higher quality and it's just a little bit more expensive than the newer stand. You definitely can use a light stand that you already have at home, but I do recommend getting that heavy duty light stand because all your stuff is going to be on this one light stand. It is the foundation of this entire setup. So you do want something that is not going to snap in half when you put everything on top of it, especially when you have expensive camera gear. So I know I'm using a cheap light stand, but 
I'm getting a better light stand coming in the mail. Anyways, if you wanna check any of this stuff out, make sure you check the links in the description. Now on top of your stand, you definitely want to throw down a sandbag and this is going to keep everything from tipping over. So definitely make sure that you have that sandbag there. This is a great safety thing. This is really just a great practice in general for video. If you're setting up a light stand or boom microphone, you definitely wanna have sandbags anyways to lay those down in case someone bumps them, they're not gonna go tipping over. Now the first thing you're gonna mount is the light itself. And I actually picked up a 20 inch grip arm that came with two grip heads. That came in at $75. Now typically they have 40 inch grip arms and what I found was there was just way too much extension that I couldn't tuck it into my corner. So getting the 20 inch one, if you have a small office space, definitely is the way to go. It's really the perfect length for the setup to get that light exactly where you want it. Once you have that arm up, you are going to need to get a spigot. And on top of that, I have a ball head. This is like a cheap $11 ball head and it's been working perfectly. The nice thing is this light that I'm using is so light. And so this ball head works perfectly for me. Now the light itself is $180 and I decided to go with this light because for a few reasons, but the main one is it has a remote. This this makes it really easy to turn it off, to turn it back on. You can actually change the color temperature. You can change the brightness if I wanna make it brighter. And having a remote really makes things much faster. So you can just look at your LCD screen. You can set your exposure with your light all using the remote. Now to add some extra diffusion to get some really nice soft lighting, I actually am using a $1 shower curtain that I cut and taped and used some $1 clamps all from the dollar store. So two bucks for some extra diffusion. And this is just gonna make things really soft. And so I definitely recommend adding this onto your light. Now that we got the light on the stand, we are going to mount our camera. And the first thing that you wanna do is put on this super clamp. The super clamp just tightens on really easily and it's gonna hold a lot of weight. So even if you have a Sony a7S III or some big mirrorless full frame camera, this is going to hold it up perfectly fine. And then we have a six inch extension arm. On top of that extension arm, we have a ball head and this is going to make it really easy to move the camera around and to get the correct framing without moving the stand. You can just loosen that ball head, adjust the camera however you'd like, and then tighten it back up and you'll be set to go. Now, before we get to the mounting of the mic, would you like this video and then comment down below? Let me know guys, what should the name of this one stand be? I don't know. Let me know in the comments and maybe the vote with the highest amount of likes will win the name of the one stand. So I did some experimenting with trying to mount this mic. You know, I tried another clamp where I then boomed up one of those podcasting arms just like Caleb Pike did in his video, but it was just a bit big for me. It seemed like I could find a better way to do it. And since most of us on YouTube are using a wide angle lens, whether it's the Sigma 16 millimeter lens or something like a 20 millimeter lens, this means that we don't need to boom the mic actually that far from the camera because we're sitting pretty close to the camera already. Now you could just mount your microphone on top of your camera, but if you wanna get better audio, you wanna bring that microphone as close to your mouth and just out of frame as possible. So I picked up an 11 inch monitor arm and I put the microphone on one end and then attached the other end to the hot shoe on top of the camera. And just bringing this microphone 11 inches closer to me makes a world of a difference. Now once you have that mounted on the camera, you are going to need an extension cable to plug that into the camera. And I just kind of wrapped up my wire, threw it over this hook so everything is nice and tidy. I also forgot to mention that you are going to need a screw converter in order to connect your microphone to the monitor arm. So that's gonna be linked in the description as well. And the microphone that I'm actually using right now on my Sony a7S III is the Tackstar microphone. It's like a $30 mic and it's super cheap. So if you don't have a microphone yet, I definitely recommend picking up this one if you're looking to shop for something around that $30 range. Last but not least, I know a lot of people thought this was really cool and it really has been super handy. It's this tray that goes on top of your stand and it allows you to put your phone up here. So I have a phone holder on top of my tray where I have my YouTube script. And so I can just glance at my YouTube script. I can see what I wanna say next. I can look back at the camera and keep going. I also have my lens cap on the tray as well as this remote for the light. So everything just stays nice and tidy. Usually this stuff is on the ground because I don't want it in the 
the shot, but it's actually really nice to just have this tray right here. You can set whatever you want down on this tray and it's gonna hold the weight. And this really has been so nice for me to add this. I really feel like this completes the entire YouTube setup, making it super functional. Now remember, you can use whatever microphone or light or camera that you have, but I hope this gave you some great ideas from my beautiful unnamed contraption. If you're looking for the best camera for YouTube, especially for beginners, then you wanna click on the screen right now. Omar has an amazing video for you to watch. I'll see you guys in the next video.